not today, try and do your tooth drawings this weekend if you can, all right? And it's not doing all of the tooth drawings, it is just outlining the, the teeth and emphasizing what we are going to be talking about in the, uh, in the lecture today about uh, this is what I want to see in the tooth drawings. And then save the labeling and everything else for later and making them pretty. So now, since we're on the subject of the tooth drawings, I want to emphasize yet again, uh, there can be a number of different ways and styles to do tooth drawings. Some are, some of you are going to be very artistic and it's, uh, it's a stress release to do all the shading and everything else. Others, it's just going to be an outline. And you know what? Both are fine because one does not necessarily mean it's going to be a better grade than the other. Uh, so if you're not artistic at all, like myself, don't worry about it. So this is um, the chapter on the permanent incisors. This book right now, this picture is telling you it's the maxillary right central incisor, the labial view. Now, what do we know about the generalities of teeth that will let us know that this is an incisor, first of all, and then how can we determine which is the mesial and which is the distal portion of that tooth? So who so wants to go? The distal is like rounded? rounded? The distal is rounded, yes. The distal is more rounded, very good. Um, incisors the CEJ. CEJ is more on mesial? The CEJ, so, so we've kind of determined that this is the CEJ here and the CEJ here. So it's more distinct, it curves more on the mesial, and you've got a sharper, sharper. corner on the mesial. So we're saying that this is the mesial and this is the distal. And once we get into uh, the deciduous teeth, you're going to be able to determine whether it's a permanent or or um, deciduous tooth. We also know from the previous chapter that this is a very large tooth and that the crown to root ratio is almost equal. So it's got a large crown compared to the, uh, the root. Right now, just looking at this picture, we don't need to worry about is it a oval root structure or a triangular root structure. We're going to get into that. So just looking at what you know already, we've got this tooth down. Does anybody remember what these little wrinkles are called? Um. They're either imbrication lines or pericomata. But, and these usually wear when you are chewing, they, they, wear, they wear down. Just as the mammalons will wear down. So maxillary central incisor, how many lobes is it formed from? Three lobes? Four? It's... Four lobes, okay? All teeth, unless they've got five cusps or whatever, are formed from four lobes. So we've got one lobe, two lobe, three lobe, and then the lingual cingulum is oh, the fourth lobe. One. Yes. Okay? Right. Three facial. So see, you guys know a lot already. So let's, let's see what the chapter says. Maxillary incisors, you have central incisors that evidence of calcification start at three months. So um, they start forming very early after birth. The eruption is seven to eight years. Now these are the maxillary incisors. Now look at this, but the root completion is 10 years. So three, two to three years later, the root is completed, okay? Because when the tooth first erupts, that root has not completely formed. So maxillary incisors, do maxillary teeth generally erupt before or after the mandibular teeth? 
After. 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 Mm -hmm. So when we go into the mandibular incisors, the um, eruption date and everything's going to be a little bit different. So maxillary incisors, eruption, seven to eight years, root completion, 10 years. Then the lateral incisors, evidence of calcification is one year compared to three months. Eruption, eight to nine years. Root completion, okay, you're going to add two to three years to that for the root completion. Uh, can you say that a little bit louder? I'm just trying to understand the evidence of calcification. Oh, evidence of calcification is when they first start to calcify, when you can see evidence of it, like if you take a radiograph. I think okay. she was asking about if it's the enamel versus the root. That oh, it's definitely the enamel. The crown of the tooth forms first. It's the enamel. All right. Your tooth drawings are going to have, all right, the Palmer, the Universal, as well as the uh, FDI system. So the Palmer notation, all right, is this the right or the left tooth? Right. That's the right tooth. It's the first tooth in that quadrant. So we've got the right side here and the left side, okay? It has one root, it has three pulp horns. I don't care about the pulp horns, guys. And it comes from four developmental lobes. So this is stuff you know already. Misty, I have a quick question. And maybe I missed this, but did, were we ever able to see like an example of a previous student's like uh paper for this? Did you check Canvas? I thought I did, but I'll look I again. I thought I posted them. I saw it there. You did? I there, yes. Yeah, I saw it under the Tooth Drawings 2020. There's like a bunch of different links and a couple of them are examples. Oh, perfect. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and I'm not, I'm not telling you if they were A, B, or C. All right, I just want to show you what other students have done. And those were, those were the ones that I had that students say, I don't want them, you can keep them. Uh, so um, that's, what I, that's what I made copies of for y'all. Okay, maxillary lateral incisors are the second tooth in each quadrant. Come, it has one root. The number of pulp horns are one, two, three. How many does the uh, central incisor have? Four. Four. Wait, three. 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 Mm -hmm. three. Okay, again, useless information for us. Totally useless. Number of developmental lobes, four. Okay. Universal and the international. Now, for the international, when you're doing the FDI, you can put 1.2 or it's when you're calling it out, it's one, two, okay? Instead of 12, tooth number 12. I personally like the period in here because then there's no, um, it's, you know, no question. This is not tooth number 22. So you'll see it both ways. All right, so those were the maxillary incisors, the mandibular incisors, the central incisors. Evidence of calcification is three months. That's about the same time as the maxillary incisors, right? Eruption is six to seven years and root completion is nine years. So again, the root is completed about two to three years after the tooth first erupts. The lateral incisors, evidence of calcification is four months. Does anybody remember when the calcification begins for the maxillary laterals? One year. So, so yeah, so, and the, um, so the, the lesson is the mandibular teeth usually erupt before 
the maxillary. So eruption is seven to eight years and root completion is 10. Mandibular central incisors. Palmer is the first tooth in each quadrant. Universal, 24 and 25. International code, 41 and 31. Okay, so 41, there's nobody has a tooth number 41 in the universal, but it could be 31, could be a mandibular right second molar. Mandibular lateral incisors, it's the second tooth in each quadrant. Single rooted, still four developmental lobes. So let's take a look at the general descriptions for incisors. Now we're talking about all the incisors. Incisors are the two teeth. You've got centrals and laterals in each quadrant at the midline. The mesial surface of the right central incisors contact the mesial of the left central incisor unless there's a space there. So does that make sense? The mesials touch each other. You've got 7, 8, 9, and 10, and 23, 24, 25, and 26 for the incisors. What are the functions of incisors? They cut food, they incise, which is, is biting, cutting. They help articulate speech. They, um, they have us not lisp and spit and everything else. Gives us a place to place our tongue. It supports our lips, which is for aesthetics, and it helps guide the mandible during movement. Miss D? Yes. Go back and show us on the picture where the mesial meet. Isn't it supposed to be this one, Miss Mesial? Oh, right there. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So guys, do stop or, or stop me. All right. I want this to be as interactive as you need. All right. What's the morphology or the shape? The maxillary central incisor crown is the largest incisor crown. Now you've got eight incisors, maxillary and mandibular incisors. The maxillary central is going to be the largest crown of all of them. Some of this is common sense if you think about it or don't overthink it. Um, Miss um, D, you say that the crowd largest the in crown. size, longest. but um, the yeah. crowd boys say longest? Well, the, this is the crown, all right? And then this is the root. Right. So of the all the incisors, this central incisor is the longest. Uh, oh. It's longer than the lateral incisor, and it's longer than the mandibular incisors. Oh, it's longer when you say larger, so it's, it's missing. Okay, thank you very much. Uh-huh. So this is very similar to what your tooth drawings may look like, okay? They can be as simple as this with not a lot of shading. And um, this is showing us that this is the mesial and the distal, right? This is the facial. And this is how you're going to be labeling your tooth drawings, okay? Everything needs to have a label on it. And this is the facial and the lingual. you oftentimes will see three mamelons from the three developmental lobes on the facial. One, two, three. This is the mesial and this is the distal. Mesial, distal. 
look at the lingual surface. These two are the same teeth. However, they look very different. All right, this is, these are your marginal ridges for the anterior teeth. So this is your mesial marginal ridge. Don't shoot me because I'm throwing out all these terms. And the distal marginal ridge. All right, this is the cingulum. This is that fourth developmental lobe. This one's got a little pit in it. This is your lingual fossa. Or depression. This one has some more of tubercles on them. Remember, a tubercle is a little extension of enamel. So some of them can be very uh, curvy. Some of them can be more um, geographic than others. They're both okay. From the facial view, the tooth is relatively straight. It's got a straight incisal edge. And this is where that graph paper is going to come in help, helpful for you. Okay, the incisal edge is relatively straight. It's rectangular shape. It's longer incisocervically than mesiodistally. So what that's saying is it's longer this way than it is this way. It tapers narrower from the contact to the CEJ, and the CEJ curves towards the apex. So this is the CEJ curving towards the apex. The distal crown surface is more convex than the mesial. The mesial incisal corner is sharper than the distal incisal. So th these are the characteristics that you really need to be cognizant of. The mesial incisal corner is sharper than the distal. And that's one of the characteristics, general characteristics. The distal contact is located cervically, more cervically than the mesial. So the distal contact is here, okay, that's the widest portion of the tooth, and the mesial contact is here. The incisal edges slope cervically to the distal. The lingual surface narrows, okay, it's narrower, and the marginal ridges converge towards the cingulum, right? Now, this is just extra information. I do not put test questions in like this because it's, it's more detail than what you really need to know, but the lingual surface is narrower, all right? So when we're talking about the shape of the root, all right, it's not a round root, okay? It's going to have a different shape to it. It's wedge shape, it's triangular shape. The bulge is greatest in the cervical third, facially and lingually. So this is that height of contour that we're talking about. The lingual has an S um, S curve to it. I'm getting very messy here, okay? The CEJ curves incisally. CEJ curves incisally. The roots taper at the apex. And when present, the distal root depression is greater than a mesial root depression. And that is one of those generalities, if you remember that from the previous chapter on root morphology. If there is a root depression, it's generally greater on the distal. Does anybody remember what the function of those root depressions are? 
that increases the surface area for the PDL to attack? Bing, 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 bing. Yes, very good. Increases the surface area so more periodontal ligaments can attach to it. So for a uh, mesial view, this, guys, is really all that you um, need to do. Now, you can make it a lot prettier if you want, but I'm fine with this, okay, because it's showing what needs to be shown. From the incisal view, it's concave lingual fossa, incisal to the cingulum. Ah! The incisal edge runs across between the widest points from the mesial and distal. Okay, it's the widest part of the tooth, mesial and distal. The labial outline is broader than the lingual. Okay, so what this is saying is the labial outline is broader than the lingual. Does that make sense? And this is the fossa. So those were the maxillary. Let's take a look on the mandibular incisors. They have smaller crowns. They're flatter in the proximal outline, so they're not going to be as curvy. Their cingulum and their facial height of contour isn't going to be as curvier. The contacts are closer to the incisal edge. All right, remember the contact for the central maxillary is here. And here, all right, versus the contact for the mandibular central is closer to the incisal edge. And the roots are relatively longer compared to the crown because the maxillary centrals have the longest crowns of all the incisors. So the crown to root ratio on the maxillary centrals is almost equal versus compared to the mandibular, they have much longer roots for the crown to root ratio. For the mandibular incisors, again, we're comparing them. They rel have relatively wider crowns facial lingually, and they have a smoother lingual surface. And this smoother lingual surface for anterior teeth is one of those general characteristics for the mandibular teeth. Mandibular counterparts generally are smoother. This tooth looks like it's squished compared to the maxillary. Mandibular incisors versus the maxillary. It has the incisal edge that's more likely lingual to the mid root axis. So your paper is going to be fairly straight up and down here for your uh, graph paper versus when you do the mandibular, the incisal edge where am I? The incisal edge here is just a little more lingual. Now, guys, if you don't draw this, it's going to be okay, but this is just one of those um, nitpicky things. So you can see where the incisal edge on the central is a little more facial than the incisal edge on the lingual. How are you differentiating maxillary from mandibular central incisors? Look at where the incisal wear is. Now you've already had a test question on this, some of you, um, that the lingual, the incisal ridge faceting, that's the wearing on the labial of the mandibular incisors. Okay, this is the wearing here on the mandibular incisors versus the maxillary because of how you bite. Now, if you had a class three occlusion where the maxillary was inside the mandibular, it would be reversed. But in a normal bite, it's the mandibular anterior facial that gets worn. 
So let's take a look at more characteristics. Maxillary central versus maxillary lateral. Take a look at that crown to root ratio. This is from a different book. It's not in your, it's not in your textbook. But you can see for the maxillary centrals how fat that tooth is and how short the crown is compared to the root. They're almost equal size, generally. Okay, now this one, not so much. This has a very long root compared to the crown. But look at the laterals. The laterals are consistently longer rooted than the central. Would you be able to tell this if you just had a tooth laying on a table? Would you be able to determine from the length of the root which was a central and which was a lateral? Would you be able to determine which is the mesial surface and which is the distal surface? The maxillary central has a wider, longer crown. The maxillary lateral is a little bit um, narrower. The maxillary lateral is more often missing or peg shaped. So of the anterior teeth, which tooth will present with the most anomalies or changes in normal characteristics, it's going to be the maxillary lateral because it can be missing or peg shape, which is a tiny little tooth. You can see this is the artistic um, drawing here. All right, this is a little bit flatter as far as the CEJ because the tooth is wider. The wider or longer the tooth is, mesial distally, the more stretched out that CEJ is. You can see also that the root surface is broad versus narrow, and the crown to root ratio okay, is more on line equal than the lateral. The maxillary central has a mesial and sizal angle at nearly a right angle. The maxillary lateral has both a mesial and sizal and distal and sizal angles that are more rounded than the centrals. So the central, okay, has a very sharp mesial and sizal angle here. You've got a sharp mesial and sizal angle on the lateral, but not quite as sharp. Okay, and you both have rounded distals. Pericomata is where the margin of each enamel layer reaches the free surface of the enamel and a fine ridge is seen in recently erupted teeth. So to further confuse you, there's imbrication lines and those are raised. So this is the imbrication line and the groove is the perichemata. I've only seen one board question ever on perichemata and imbrication lines. This says it's the right central incisor. Would you be able to tell? Proximal contacts. The mesial and distal contacts are in the incisal third, but the lateral contacts are more cervical than the central. So the lateral contacts are more cervical, all right? So they're all in the remember how you divide up the tooth in the incisal third, but the lateral is a little bit more cervical. 
the maxillary root is relatively shorter compared to the crown on the central, the maxillary lateral root is relatively longer. The maxillary central is a longer tooth. It's bigger, okay, all over. So it's going to be longer. The total length of it's going to be longer, but the crown to root ratio is different. The maxillary central root is relatively shorter, thicker, and more cone shape. It's a fatter root versus the maxillary lateral, lateral root, excuse me, is more likely to bend distally at the apex. That central incisor, not so much. One of those general character, characteristics, my friends, is if a root tilts or bends, it generally bends towards the distal. General characteristic. So when you're trying to figure out which is the mesial and which is the distal, you're looking for a root bend and you're looking for the sharpness. You're looking at CEJ. You're putting all of those pieces together to try and figure out which tooth is it? Is it the right tooth or the left tooth? Okay, which tooth is it? Which is the mesial and which is the distal? You've seen this one before. The linguals, okay, maxillary centrals compared to the maxillary laterals. The maxillary laterals are more likely to have deeper lingual fosses and pits, lingual pits, than the central. So a lingual pit, okay, is where this is the cingulum here. You've got your marginal ridges. You've got your fossa in here, and the pit is going to be right here. So when you're looking at teeth that might need sealants, the laterals oftentimes will need a sealant versus the centrals don't on the lingual because they don't have that deep pit. Maxillary central incisor, the link of the cingulum is more developed and is off center towards the distal from the incisal view. The cingulum of the lateral is more center, centered. <gasps> what does that mean? Okay, this is the central incisor. Can you see where it is not evenly shaped? The lateral is more evenly shaped versus the central looks like it's pinched and off center just a little bit. Okay, that distal is pulled. So this is the center and this is the center of the cingulum. It's towards the distal because that distal area is being pulled towards the distal. So everything's displaced a little bit, unlike the lateral where it's very symmetrical. So on your pictures, I'm going to want to see this distal pull. I want to see the cingulum being distally displaced. And these are the notes when I go through these that I want you to be taking on a sticky note or something. This is what I want to be showing up on your drawings because these are going to be the identification of what makes one tooth this over the other. From the lingual view, the maxillary lateral incisor has a distal marginal ridge that appears shorter than the mesial, right? So what that's saying is the mesial is longer than the distal. So the incisal edge is not straight versus look at the central. The incisal edge is more straight. Maxillary, maxillary laterals are more likely to have deeper lingual pits than the centrals. You can also have ridges. Ridges collect stain 
and can be a caries indicator. Okay, this area here, if they had a higher caries rate, you'd want to put a sealant in that, even if it was an adult. Let's put a sealant in that. The nice thing about being in school, my friends, is that you don't have to charge the patient anything for these services. So if it's something that they would benefit from, we'll okay it. The dentist will okay it. We want you to have the experience of placing sealants. All incisor roots have a lingual surface that are convex. The roots taper narrower towards the lingual. That's all that's saying, okay? The apex of the root is narrower. And the roots taper narrower towards the lingual. So the lingual is going to be a little narrower than the facial. So the facial is going to be broader and the lingual is going to be narrower. So the shape of the root is like that. So this will be the facial and this will be the lingual. Let's turn the tooth on its side. For the proximal view. The maxillary centrals have a distal incisal corner. Okay, you can really see this distal incisal twist. And that distal incisal twist is saying that this tooth is not straight across this way. It's going towards the distal just a little bit. It's being pulled distal lingually. It's being pulled distal lingually. This was from another textbook. It was talking about maxillary incisors. Does this look like a maxillary incisor to you? But it was on the maxillary incisor. This is a permanent mandibular canine. And when you get when we get into the canines, you're going to see it. But all as on all anterior teeth, the mesial CEJ curves more than the distal. On all teeth. On all teeth. Sometimes it's more significant than others. The largest CEJ curve of all teeth is the mesial of the maxillary central incisors. Test question. The largest CEJ curve of all teeth is mesial of the maxillary central incisors. Both maxillary central and laterals have their height of contour, the fattest portion of the tooth is in the cervical third. Incisal third, middle third, cervical third. Maxillary central root has a flatter lingual outline. The laterals are more overall uniform in shape. Don't need to know that. These are really good incisal pictures, all right? Really good incisal pictures. You know that this is that central incisor. I'm going to know it when you draw it because this distal has a distal lingual pull. The center of the tooth is off place. This is the cingulum, slightly distal versus the lateral is going to be more symmetrical. I'm saying this over and over and over again on purpose. Both maxillary incisors have a mesial distal greater than the facial lingual but more so on the maxillary central. So what they're saying is it's wider than it is fatter. The maxillary central has a triangular outline because of that facial 
surface being so broad and the maxillary lateral is a little more oval. Maxillary centrals exhibit a distal lingual twist of the incisal edge. That distal lingual twist versus the lateral does not. This is that distal lingual twist. The maxillary central has a cingulum distal to the root midline because of that distal lingual twist. And when we talk about the mandibular anteriors, we're going to be talking about a distal lingual twist as well. These are identifying marks. It gets more thrilling, doesn't it? Maxillary laterals have more of a labial curve. It's more of a labial curve versus this one stretched out. They can be shovel shaped or double shovel shaped, so there can be anomalies or variations. Look at the marginal ridge here. And we're going to get into this in another chapter. These are the marginal ridges that are very distinct. Mesial marginal ridge and distal marginal ridge. That was everything you needed to know about the maxillary incisors. Is it time for a break or do we go on? What's the pleasure of the group? It wouldn't make me sad to have a little break. <laughs> okay. I would agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, uh, what we do is, is we repeat, we repeat, we repeat, we repeat. So eventually this will all be permanent information. The CEJ curves more on the mesial than it does on the distal. If there's a distal, um, if the root curves, it usually curves towards the distal. I mean, these are things that um, by the time I say it a million times, will be part of your repertoire. So let me go ahead and stop the recording. Back from break. Whew, I'm back. <laughs> okay. um, this is very overwhelming and I can appreciate where you're coming from. Uh, but this will be permanent information in your brain by the time you're done with this course. So just take a deep breath, absorb it a little bit at a time. I'm emphasizing what you really need to know. We are not going for a DDS degree here, but we do need to know what these general characteristics are so we can identify what's in a patient's mouth, what's there and what's not there, as well as what the root structure is like because we're dealing with working underneath the tissue the entire time and we can't see what we're scaling or where there's calculus. So is this a root depression? Is it a groove? Is it decay? Uh, where do I need to round my instrument a little bit more to get that toe of my curette into that groove so I'm not missing calculus? So there's a reason that we're putting you through all of this, more so than the reason of I had to do it, so so do you. Sometimes that seems like the only reason, but it's not. So let's take a look at um, the difference between mandibular incisors. So we've done the top teeth. Let's do the bottom teeth. They look almost the same. Oh, no. The centrals versus the laterals. My gosh, just shoot me. Okay, look at the central. This is the central over here. All right, this is the central. It's smaller than the lateral, isn't it? It's narrower than the lateral. So that's one thing, but if you just had one tooth to look at, be it a central or a lateral, how would you tell the difference? The mandibular central is symmetrical, right? It's symmetrical. The mesial incisal edge and that distal incisal edge are almost the same. They're symmetrical. It's a straight up and down tooth. So 
having said that, I will never ask you, is this a mandibular anterior central right or a mandibular anterior central left, unless you've got the lateral incisor to compare it to? Because you can't tell the difference. They're so similar, the central incisors. The mandibular lateral is bigger than the central, but unless you've got something to compare it to, again, you don't know. The mandibular lateral has a disto incisal angle that is more rounded than the mesio incisal. The mesio and distal incisal angles are equal on the central. So remember the central, mandibular central lateral is very symmetrical. Not so much on the lateral. Can you see that it's a little more rounded on the distal? In fact, if I was to take this tooth and turn it upside down, would I think that that was a different tooth? If it was upside down, what tooth would I automatically think it was? The uh, left lateral maxillary? Yeah, well, it's okay. So yeah, the a, a maxillary lateral. Okay, I wasn't expecting right or left at this point, but yeah, if I was to turn that tooth upside down, it would look like a, a lateral incisor to me. Maxillary. Oh, Lindsay, I'm just see, I'm just getting into the text. My son is missing both maxillary laterals. Okay, and uh, Jennifer has a peg lateral. Well, when we have you guys in as patients, um, I mean, let's take a look at what that peg lateral looks like. So Jennifer, everybody's going to be taking a look at you. Now, Lindsay, I'm going to be asking you, who else in your family is missing laterals? Um, my little sister is missing uh, premolars, but I don't know anyone else that's many, missing laterals, but he so, still has, he's nine and he still has both of his baby laterals and we're holding on to them. <laughs> yes, and hopefully making, keeping that space so yeah. that implants can be, yeah, can be placed. On. Oh my goodness. Um, and then a peg lateral. So again, these are fairly common anomalies that occur. A lot of it is familial. So if you have a child or a patient that is missing laterals, uh, permanent laterals, there's usually somebody in their lineage that is missing them also that they know of. All right, so the central incisors, the mandibular central incisors are very symmetrical. You're not going to be able to tell a right central incisor from a left central incisor if you're looking at them. You have to have a tooth next to it because the laterals do have more uh, variation. Three mammalons from three developmental lobes. What is, uh, how many developmental lobes is a mandibular central incisor formed from? Four. Four. Don't say that with a question. Four. <laughs> <laughs> All right, three on the facial and one on the lingual. Mandibular centrals have a mesial incisal angle that is equal to the distal incisal angle. So what this is saying is it's a symmetrical tooth. The lateral incisal has that disto incisal angle that's more rounded than the mesial incisal angle. Is this making sense? The mandibular central has a mesial and distal contact at the same level because it's a symmetrical tooth versus the mandibular lateral has a mesial contact that's more incisal than the distal. Is there a question? Crown to root ratios. The mandibular incisor roots appear longer relative to the crown. Now they're a smaller Ms. D, tooth. I'm sorry. Yeah. Can you go back to that last slide? I had a question that I totally forgot what it was. I when you said questions, I thought yes, but then it's let me just look at it for a second, see if I remember. 
Um, you said mandibular ladder has mesial contact more incisal than distal. Wait, I think I get that. I think that's what okay, I didn't this is the This is the symmetrical tooth. So the mesial and distal are the same. On okay. the central, on the lateral, you can see that the incisal edge goes down just oh, a there little it bit. Is. That distal incisal is more rounded. The mesial incisal is more angled. Right. I got it. Thank you. Okay. The mandibular roots appear longer, but are they really? Okay. It's look at the size of the teeth here. Are they really? Okay. But they appear longer when compared to the crown of the tooth. The root shape, the distal bend of the root tip is more common than a mesial bend. This is one of those general characteristics, my friend, of any tooth. If a root bends, it generally bends towards the distal. So guess what? You're looking for any root bends to give you a hint this very subtle slopes. If it bends, it generally bends towards the distal. Is that um, central, like uh, mandibular incisor towards the distal? Towards the mesial, I mean? This one is, yeah. But we're okay. talking generalities. This is from another book that I used and it was really for, um, whoops, for dentists. And it was just too technical. <laughs> so, but I stole a lot of the pictures because they have pictures of real teeth. But the distal root, okay, if it bends, it's going to more commonly bend towards the distal. Lingual view. They're very smooth compared to the maxillary incisors. All mandibular incisors have minimal marginal ridges and fossa depth compared to the maxillary. So the lingual of the maxillary incisor is very curvy. It's got these big marginal ridges and a deeper fossa versus the mandibular incisors are smoother. The mandibular lateral cingulum is more distal to the mid root axis than on the centrals. What other tooth were we talking about that was talking about this distal lingual twist? Central maxillary, right? Maxillary central has the distal lingual twist. The mandibular lateral has the mandibular distal lingual twist. Very good, okay? So both the mandibular incisors have mesial and distal root depressions, all right? They both have root depressions and they're more prominent um, on the maxillary incisors. Again, you want that um, surface area. They don't look so different, the central versus the lateral, but this is the central and this is the lateral. The central is a little bit smaller than the lateral. You can see that the lateral is bigger. And because of that distal lingual twist, this is what they're, they're drawing. This is the incisal or the, the lingual surface here. And then this is the distal portion of the tooth. You can see the distal portion here. So they're just drawing an extra line, not to panic you on what your drawing looks like, but that's to illustrate that distal lingual twist. This is to illustrate that distal lingual twist. You can see just a little bit right here where they've drawn an extra line. But they look very similar, don't they? One's just a little fatter than the other. 
the CEJ curves towards the incisal more on the mesial than it does on the distal. The most CEJ curvature of the mandibular arch is on the mesial of the central incisors. Where is the most CEJ curvature on the maxillary? Central incisors. Central incisors. Very good. Yeah. All right. Mesial, mesial. And it's the most mesial you can get. The buccal and lingual contours of both centrals and laterals are in the cervical third. The height of contour, remember the fattest portion of the tooth, is in the cervical third. All mandibular incisors have smooth lingual surfaces with shallow fossa, especially compared to the maxillary counterparts. Smooth lingual surfaces. Mandibular roots are much wider facial lingually than mesiodistally. And both mandibular incisors have mesial and distal root depressions, the distal being deeper. Remember on the maxillary, it's the distal root depression generally. So these mandibular central incisors are so narrow, they need more surface space for those uh, periodontal ligaments. So they have both a mesial and a distal root depression. From the incisal view, would you be able to tell, okay, which is the central and which is the lateral by looking at these pictures? This is a very symmetrical tooth you can tell the facial versus the lingual, versus this has more of a distal lingual twist. All mandibular incisors have the facial lingual dimension greater than the mesiodistal. So it's a pinched tooth. The facial lingual is greater than the mesial distal. The facial lingual is greater than the mesiodistal. The mandibular central incisor is symmetrical, the lateral is not. The lateral incisor has an incisal edge with that distolingual twist, the central does not. So we're saying the same thing in a number of different ways. All right, the central incisor is so symmetrical, you're not gonna be able to tell whether it's a right or a left. The lateral incisor has that distal lingual twist. With that, the mandibular lateral incisor has a cingulum that's distal to the mid root axis. All right, the central incisor is completely symmetrical the lateral incisor has that distal lingual twist. Okay, so it's going to be off-centered. So it's going to be that distal lingual twist here, very much like the maxillary central incisor. All have a facial contour slightly convex. and the lingual is more. So when we're talking about anterior teeth, we also need to talk about gemination and fusion. You're going to be getting this also in radiology. Maxillary central incisors may have short roots, okay, or an unusually large crown. So they can be dwarfed roots. Gemination, if it occurs, usually occurs on the maxillary central incisor. It's usually the maxillary, but what is this a picture of? This is a picture of the mandibular. So gemination is defined as an enlarged crown or joined tooth in which the tooth count is normal 
all right? A fusion is defined as a single enlarged tooth or joined tooth where the tooth count reveals a missing tooth. Fusion, look at this, you've got two roots, the teeth are fused together versus gemination, you've got one root that's split into two. Gemination is more prominent on the maxillary incisors than it is on the mandibular. That has been a board question. So I've included that in this chapter because you'll get it again when we talk about anomalies. Gemination, fusion, know the difference. Don't let the picture of a mandibular central fool you. Maxillary central, gemination. This is a deciduous tooth. You can see the permanent tooth here. Gemination. Miss D? Yeah. Is it more common on deciduous teeth? It's more common on deciduous teeth. Okay. Fusion. Two teeth fused together. You've got two roots. So let's take a look at some variations of mandibular incisors. There are fewer anomalies than in the maxillary counterparts on the mandibular. Okay, that's the good thing. They're smoother. Yay. So maxillary incisors. If a maxillary incisor has increased prominence of the lingual marginal ridge and a deeper lingual fossa, it may con be considered a shovel-shaped incisor. So what you're wanting to look at, okay, is look at this. This is the distal marginal ridge and the mesial marginal ridge. This is the cingulum. you're not going to see very many shovel shaped. Okay, that's one of the anomalies. But look how deep this faucet is. There's going to be calculus here. There's going to be stain here that you have to remove. How do you go about that? You can see that there's a groove here that can develop calculus. Maxillary incisors also have an accentuated cingulum. They have deeper grooves and they show incisal attrition. Incisal attrition is the wearing, tooth to tooth wearing. Here, because we're using them, we're biting into things. It has a more distinct cingulum than do the mandibular counterparts. Another lingual feature is sometimes present and you have a lingual pit. Lingual pit. Biofilm, plaque retention. All right, so decay can be here. Sometimes in the older adults, you'll see an amalgam silver filling there. More, more on the lateral than you do on the central. Now they're placing composites. Hopefully we're placing sealants before anything that can happen to them happens to them. Also present may be a vertical, vertically placed lingual groove, okay, that originates in the lingual pit and extends cervically and slightly distally to, uh, onto the cingulum and is more common on the laterals. This is decay here. There was a groove here, okay, the gum line was here, so that groove resulted in tooth decay. Lingual gingival grooves. This just looks like a little pit. You place the probe, this is the curve of the probe. It goes all the way down. I had a patient um, that had one of these and you're doing your probing and you're probing and you're, you're, you're bobbing, you're walking, you're walking, three, two, three, three, two, three, three, two, three, three, two, three, three, two, 10, 
323. My doctor did a flap, whoops, and we were able to, um, so after the flap, you could see that this groove, this is uh, exactly what it looks like. Went all the way up, okay, 10 millimeters. He was able to clean that out, okay, because there was calculus in that groove. Uh, he used a high-speed handpiece, a burr, to clean that out because scalars can't reach there. And then he was able to replace this with a little bit of uh, Gore-Tex and other stuff, and the pocket went away. But you can see how deep that pocket is from that lingual groove. Pits can have decay. Super gingival tooth deposits and stain collect on these prominent lingual surfaces. This is what we're checking when we're doing your polishing check to make sure all of that is biofilm free. And we'll show you how to do that. So we need to be careful when we're scaling. We need to know where those root concavities are so we know how to turn our instrument to get into those cavities, concavities. Doesn't that look like fun? Look at that. This is a sickle scaler. And look at, I mean, wouldn't you just love to pop that off? It's fun. Is that calculus? That's calculus, baby. This is calculus here and here and here, and it's just ringing around the tooth. This is calculus here. So much fun. And bleeding. You are going to be checking everybody's occlusion. You're going to be checking overbite and overjet. You're going to be looking at them when they're talking with you and you're reviewing their medical history and you're doing a caries risk assessment uh, before you even slip into their mouth. And you're going to be looking at their lip resting posture. Can they close their lips or do they have an open bite? Do they breathe through their mouth because of the architecture of their palate or their lips? But it's that lip seal in a resting posture, okay, that is what we're looking at here. Now, this, are we doing anything about this? If they have an open bite, no. But we're talking to the patient. Has anybody ever discussed with you, um, you know, how you swallow or have you noticed that your bite is flaring in the front teeth? Uh, you know, are you a mouth breather? Do you have a lot of sinus issues and allergies? You might need to refer them to uh, a myofunctional therapist or an orthodontist or something if, uh, if necessary. So essentially, if you have an open bite, you're more likely for the incisors to move outward? That is an open bite, yes. An open bite is, think about a pacifier baby, where the anteriors are, are, aren't overlapping each other. You know, they're going towards the lips. That's and an that's open more bite. Common if you don't naturally close your lips in resting position? That, that may happen depending on what the muscles of the tongue do. The okay. lips and the tongue are very powerful muscles and they determine a lot of what goes on inside the mouth as far as the, the architecture of the teeth and everything. Okay. Ms. D, yeah. um, and I, I think we, we can do sealants, but can we diagnose it? Can we tell patients that they should get a sealant? We can recommend them and let's see what the doctor says. Okay. Okay, we can do it, right? That yes. Works. Yeah, in private practice, what I would do is, you know, I'd have little Susie or little Johnny, all their sixes would come in, you know, and they weren't in the last time. And if I had time, I'd, I'd go in to the doctor and pop my head in and say, you know, Johnny's sixes are in, they look good. Um, I took bite wings today. Uh, can I go ahead and play sealants if I had time? And, and we'd say, sure, you know, go ahead. 
because we had that uh, trust in each other. Now, when you first start working for a doctor, they're not going to say sure until they know what you know and what you don't know and are you on the same page with things. But yes, you can recommend. Thank you. And it's very seldom that a dentist will not follow through with your recommendation if it means it's going to uh, generate more revenue for them. All right, my friends, this is everything you need to know and more about the permanent incisors. We're done. So Ms. D, your recommendation would be that we draw out our both maxillary and mandibular central and lateral incisors just because it's fresh for us now? Yes, read the book, do your quiz, draw them out before you forget because that distal lingual twist on the set maxillary central incisor and that distal lingual twist on the mandibular lateral incisor. You draw them, you're going to know them. And do you have, a, like, if I was to draw it out and I wanted to show it to you? Absolutely. You, okay, you'd be able to tell me if I was on the right track or not? Oh, absolutely. Bring them into clinic. Bring them in on Wednesday. Take pictures of them and send them to me. I will be letting you know what I want to see. Okay. You know, I'm not seeing that distal lingual twist or, you know, that's, that's why I want you to have like sticky notes with you. So you make sure that you're, you're doing what, um, what I'm going to be looking for in your drawings. 